Hello everyone, welcome to another CNCM lecture. My name is Noah Scheinbaum and this week's topic is on invariance and monovariance. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe below and click the link in the description to join CNCM. We have a rapidly growing community of 976 members at the time of recording, and it's a really good resource for anyone who wants to practice their skills in competition math. We have a mini competition called Problem of the Day. We release a problem every day, as the name suggests. For this week, we'll release problems on the topic of the lecture, invariance and monovariance. We also have online competitions like CNCM Online. We posted our first round about a week ago, and we look forward to hosting the second round in the near future. We don't have a set date yet, but look forward to it soon. All right, let's get started. So what are invariants? An invariant is any quantity that does not change after a series of transformations. Examples of some invariants. An area of a polygon after a basic transformation, excluding dilation. For example, if you take a triangle and you rotate it 120 degrees, it's still the same triangle. It's not going to get any bigger or smaller. Um, it's just going to be rotated. Uh, the parity of a number when multiplied by an odd integer. If you take 12, which is an even number, and multiply it by 7, which is an odd number, you're going to get 84, which is still an even number. If you get 9, if you take 9, which is an odd number, and multiply it by 7, which is an odd number, you're going to get 63, also an odd number. Uh, the value of 0 before and after it's multiplied by any number. If you take 0 and multiply it by a number, you're going to get 0. So the value of 0 there is invariant. The percent mass composition of oxygen and water after being heated. Um, it's still going to be H2O. And repeatedly summing all the digits in a number to find new numbers results in all numbers being congruent modulo 9. Here's an example. Um, 72,893. If you add all of these digits up, 7 plus 2 plus 8 plus 9 plus 3, that gives you 29. Add these up, 2 plus 9, that gives you 11. 1 plus 1, that gives you 2. All of those numbers are 2 modulo 9. All right, so that's great and all, but why are they useful? If you have a process with some starting state, uh, figuring out what doesn't change is sometimes very, very important to understanding how the process as a whole works. Uh, for example, the use of invariance is often important to find out if a given state is possible or to help find all possible states. The formula will be explained in the next problem. So monovariant and invariant problems are often found at the Olympiad level. In the scheme of this lecture, we're going to try to keep it simple but not too simple. There's going to be a couple of difficult problems here and there, but they're all going to be doable. Um, they're rarely simple. Um, as soon as you find that there is an invariant and monovariant, however, uh, the plan of action from there depends on the problem, but it will be much clearer than it was before. Generally, that will lead you to find some sort of pattern or some sort of information about the problem that you didn't have before. So here's a warm-up problem. The magic field has 1,000 flowers. The magic field's owners encourage visitors to come and pick the flowers. However, there are some rules. A visitor may only pick 30, 90, 102, or 120 flowers at a time, and when they do, a certain number of flowers will immediately grow back, 102, 144, 12, or 84, respectively. The magic field will close permanently if and only if the field is left with zero flowers. Will the magic field ever close? Notice that the net flowers gained for all options is congruent to zero modulo 3. At first glance, this problem may seem difficult, but if you use invariance, which uh, can be found here, um, it becomes much more simple. Um, your first option is you pick 30 flowers and 102 grows back, so you have 102 minus 30, 72 net flowers, 0 modulo 3. Second one, 144 minus 90, 54 net flowers, 0 modulo 3. The third one, 12 minus 102, negative 90 net flowers, 0 modulo 3. And then the fourth one, 84 minus 120, negative 36 net flowers, 0 modulo 3. Since you can only add 0 to the remainder of the number of flowers when divided by 3, the remainder is invariant. And since 1,000 is equal to or congruent to 1 modulo 3, uh, the remainder of flowers when divided by 3 will always be 1. So the number of flowers will never be able to reach 0. The magic field will never close. However, you could get it below all four of those numbers so nobody could pick flowers. And maybe you have to wait for more flowers to grow back. I don't work there, I don't know how the magic field works, you'd have to contact the owners. Um, but yeah, the magic field will never close as long as everyone follows the rules. Alright, invariant problem two. 
Suppose n is an odd integer and I write the numbers 1, 2, 3 through 2n on a blackboard. I repeatedly pick two of the numbers on the blackboard at random, a and b, erase them, and write the absolute value of the difference instead. This continues until only one number is left. Is this number odd or even? Now, I don't blame you if you decide to choose n equals 3 or n equals 5, some small number, um, small odd number, and then just bash it out from there, um, and then finding what number ends up being left. Um, it wouldn't be the worst idea. If you decide to do that on competition day with a problem like this, all the more power to you. However, this is an invariance lecture, so uh, we're going to give the actual solution. Um, for all integers a and b, a plus b is congruent to a minus b modulo 2. For example, if you take 5 and 7, 5 plus 7 is 12, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, both of those numbers are equal to 0 modulo 2. The parity of the sum of the numbers on the blackboard is invariant, so the parity of the last number will always be the same as the parity of the initial sum. So if the last number is odd, uh, the initial sum would have to be odd. If the last number is even, the initial sum would have to be even. With this piece of information, all we have to do is find the summation of uh, the parity of the summation of the initial numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 through 2n. Uh, it's well known that summing numbers from 0 to n um, results in n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So if you want to sum numbers from 0 to 2n, just substitute 2n uh, in here everywhere there's n. That gets this, and then the 2s cancel out here, so you're left with n multiplied by 2n plus 1. And n is odd, so then this term will be odd because n is n, and then this term will be odd because 2n will then be even, and then adding 1 will make it odd. An odd number times an odd number will always be odd, so the last number on the blackboard is odd. Great. So one, what are monovariants? It's a variable which only changes in one direction, like uh, strictly increasing or decreasing. This can be very useful. Consider a function which always returns a value of a positive integer. If this function is strictly decreasing and at some point it returns a value of n, it must terminate after at most n minus 1 steps, decreasing by 1 each time. Let's say you have a function like this and it returns a value of 6, uh, then the biggest next value that it could return is then 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, which is 5 steps before it runs out of numbers that it can go to because it can't decrease anymore because then it wouldn't be a positive integer and then it can't stay at 1 because it wouldn't be decreasing so your the sequence completely uh, terminates. So you're left with n minus 1 steps which is 5 steps and if it can be found that a variable decreases by the same amount each time it can help to find a pattern which will simplify the problem a lot, which will be found in the next problem. Now, this problem is actually one of my favorite math problems of all time. It's fairly easy. I just, I just like how it is. Um, let m be a positive integer and let the sequence a0, a1 to am be a sequence of reals such that a0 equals 37, a1 equals 72, am equals 0, and a sub k plus 1 equals a sub k minus 1 minus 3 over a k for k equals 1, 2 through m minus 1. Find m. All right. So it looks really complicated at first. But then if you rewrite this, if you multiply this a k on both sides, uh, you get a k times a k plus 1 equals a k minus 1 times a k minus 3. And then... This means that this is a monovariant, because every time that k increases by 1, this value decreases by 3, as you can see in this formula, right? When k equals 0, a k times a k plus 1 will get 37 times 72, because a 0 equals 37, and then a 1 equals 72, which is 2,664. And since it decreases by 3 every time k increases by 1, this will be equal to 0 when k equals 2,664 divided by 3, or 888. Now be careful here, because I would be tempted to just say 888 is the answer, but keep in mind that what we just found is m minus 1, not m, and we are looking for m. So m minus 1 equals 888, so adding 1, you find that m equals 889. It's a fairly simple problem, but if you didn't use monovariance, it would be a lot more complicated. 
Now, like I said, this is often found more at the Olympiad level. Um, I'm not going to cover it in this lecture. If you would like, I could send you some resources where there are problems at the Olympiad level. Just uh, contact me directly on our Discord server. If you're not in our Discord server, uh, join it using the link in the description and then contact me directly. Um, well, thank you for sitting through our lecture. Please make sure to like and subscribe the video if you enjoyed the content. 